So Richard, your work is called Headlessness, right? That's right. Um, to me, it, it appears very much like you have a head, right? So what does headlessness mean? What does that mean? Well, I have one for you, but I don't for me. And uh, I'm just being aware of my own point of view and taking it seriously. So when I look at you, I have your face and mm. not Richard. Okay. So what about looking in a mirror? And when you, when you see a reflection in the mirror, yeah. there's some identification with that face belonging to you, yeah? Yes, the mirror shows me what I look like at that range, at uh, 18 inches or something. Mm. And uh, what I look like depends on where I'm looked at from. So from there you see my face. If you came up to me, you'd see a patch of skin and then you'd find with the right instruments, uh, cells. And so we have layers. Mm. And my mirror shows me what I look like at that layer. I had a, a bigger mirror and put it further away, I'd see my whole body. Right, and then zooming out. I'd see the, the country and the planet and the star. Right. So this is verifiable if you have the instruments, that you have layers. And you identify with these layers. So I identify with my face in the mirror. And I identify with my whole body or I identify with my country mm -hmm. or my planet. And the headless way is, is uh, the heart of the headless way, I suppose, is asking the question, who am I? So who is at the heart of all these appearances, all is these it, layers? Who is it that identifies with these layers? Well, uh, yes, that's right. And uh, the uh, experiments that we use are for guiding our attention to what we are mm. from our own point of view, rather than just going by what we look like to others. So and here, I, my hands disappear into nothing. Yeah. So then what of, what of just, you know, even if I'm not looking at this water glass here, I can still look at it, look away and look back and it's still there. Yeah. So, it's not so much, like do my hands, are you saying that my hands disappear? To, like they cease to exist when they go back here, or what? Well, it might be easiest to explain it developmentally. When you're in the first stage of the baby, the hands disappear, right. and the uh, glass isn't there when you look away, right. and the toy is gone, right. and tomorrow doesn't exist. <laughs> and growing up is learning to see yourself from outside, and. Uh, imagine what's behind you and what's there when you can't see it and take that seriously. It's very useful. Well, absolutely. It's absolutely <laughs> yeah. crucial. Yeah. Yes. So I absolutely accept that there's something behind me and that tomorrow's going to exist. But now I distinguish between that kind of knowledge mm -hmm. and my direct experience. Mm -hmm. Because when, we grow, when we're a baby, we're headless and we don't know about what's behind us. And when we're an adult, we've learned to think about what's behind us, but we then suppress our headlessness, mm. you see, our true nature, mm -hmm. which uh, we sort of need to do in a way. But then when you become aware again of your headless openness, your true self, mm -hmm. you don't then deny the kind of level on which the glass is still there when you can't look at it. Right. You have both. You see. So it's a both and. Yeah. It's not... Exclusive. No, not right. at all. You're, you don't have to sacrifice the effective ways that we operate in the world no. for headlessness. No, of course not. No. That's yeah, good. Enjoy both. Yeah, it's yeah, quite that's, good. That's it? good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what yeah. did you say? Thank that goodness. At the talk today, you said you can have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's probably a relief for some. Oh, huge. I see. I think you know. I've seen researching different spiritual paths. Um, there can be a quality of denial, yes. you know, denying this experience or yes. denying myself. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a sort of central question or even problem in the spiritual life is, you know, what to do with the individual self when yeah. you've discovered the, the true self.
Yeah, so what what do we do? Well, you, you place it, you see. My face is there in the mirror, yeah. and somewhere out there between you and me, and uh, but here I'm empty. So now I don't have to get rid of Richard. I enjoy the presence of Richard wherever he is, you see, but I'm aware that Richard is a kind of disguise I'm putting on as who I really am, mm -hmm. you see. Maybe we could um, fashion one of the headless experiments because people are going to be watching this video, you know? So yes. the people watching the video are seeing a certain perspective of us. Yes, yes. that's right. Well, uh, no, that's very good. Uh, the viewer will be looking from there, I suppose. And they can see our two heads. Right. One head, yes. two heads. But for me, it's head to no head, and the same the other way around. Because I you. see your head, but... You don't see yours. No, there's just... Um, phenomena arising. That's right. Yes. So now the viewer can notice that there's two heads here, but they don't see their own head there. <laughs> right. You see. And our two faces are appearing in the open space yeah. of that, that you're looking at them. So, welcome. <laughs> so there's a no head over here. Yes. There's a no head over here. Yes. But, okay, so that's an interesting question, right? Is it one no head, two no head, three no head, or is it just... Well, you see what I mean? I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, on present experience, how many no heads do you actually experience? Uh, it's almost not even a number, it just no. is. But I mean, if we sort of relax a bit about words, sure. one. one so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right. So isn't that weird? Because you experience one, and I experience <laughs> one, and you experience one. Yeah. It's the, a deep mystery, this, you see, mm. that the one has somehow become many. I don't know how it does it, yeah. you see, but I think one of the good things about it, it gets to talk to itself on Friday morning mm. in California. Right. With two voices. <laughs> With two voices. Yes. <laughs> see, two voices in one no-head, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is just fantastic. The, the pointing out methods of the headless way are, um, in my experience, they're almost childishly direct. Almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they are. Okay, they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's almost topsy turvy. In a way, in a way, for me, it's extremely direct common sense, but it goes against like the logic that's been ingrained in me. Yes, of course. You see. As you're growing up, you start headless as the baby without words, without yeah. logic, you see. Yeah. And you only know your own view. So you're the one, but you don't know you're the one, you don't know about others. You don't know you're the one. No. Right. And growing up is not learning that you're the one, it's learning that you're Richard or Ben or whoever it is, right? And in other words, it's learning to see yourself from outside. And that's, that's the social view. Mm -hmm. And you learn to uh, you find out which one you are, mm -hmm. and then you learn to take responsibility more or less for being that one. And to, you know, this is Richard speaking, and mm -hmm. this is Richard moving his hands. Mm -hmm. So that is the process of growing up, is becoming a person, mm -hmm. which is really seeing yourself from outside. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of a way of looking at it. I'm seeing myself from there and taking responsibility for what you tell me I am, mm -hmm. in a way. Right. You see and the mirror. But then when you see uh, who you are, it's a very different perspective. Yeah. But that does not deny the social view. You've got both. See, it'd be yeah. ridiculous if it denied that view. But now you're taking seriously your own view, which, as you say, is, is very, very different from the social view. Absolutely. And yeah. There are some great experiments on headless.org that are very much in line with what we just kind of did with the camera. And I was looking into them, and I was doing the experiments, yeah. and um, a lot of it is, is based off Harding's work, yeah. Yeah. And he was, in the experiments, it discussed how, from my direct point of view, just very directly, if I look down at my legs, they're actually extending upwards. I know, in the picture. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I was to draw myself as I am, directly, yeah. with no concept of spatial distance between things or yes. perspective, my 
my whole experience is displaying outwards. From myself. Yes, that's right. And yeah. then the headlessness is where it's all coming from, yes. or the void, would you say? Yes, I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. So then, between a state of headlessness and a state of headiness, where I have a head, right, where I assume that I have a head, what changes? Right? Like, is there, is there a moment of realization where it's, wait a minute, I don't have a head, you know? Well, you see, I think the experience is immediate and total. You can't half see your head, can you? And you can't see it just a little bit better today than yesterday. So you certainly never have half a head. No. <laughs> it's all or nothing. Yes. But then what we think and feel about it changes, mm -hmm. which is the realizations that mm -hmm. come and go. And so those uh, are different for each person. And uh, we don't need to confuse the reactions we have to this neutral nonverbal state with the neutral nonverbal state. On the one hand, is this openness that is nonverbal. Mm -hmm. You can't do it wrong. It's what you are. It's what you've always been. And on the other hand, is your present reflection and reaction to it, like, mm. you know, like, wow, or so what? Right. But either is a valid right. reaction right. to the experience, which is always available. Look, you see, if you point at your face, the viewer can try it. See, well, you're not. You're pointing at no face. Well, right. I am, anyway. Right. And that is not dependent on how happy you're feeling, your mood, or whether you've meditated before. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't see your face. No matter what you do. No, that's right. <laughs> yes. So whether or not you do anything with it, in other words, whether or not you go on uh, being aware of it, mm -hmm. and kind of get into the habit of consciously being headless, you see, that that is where it's going to make a difference to your life if you do that. So that's what I wanted to kind of get into, like the difference in one's life. This is more or less a spiritual practice, if, if we had to categorize it, yeah. And, you know, a lot of spiritual practices are focused on dealing with suffering, you know, because yeah. sometimes it's very uncomfortable to have a head. Sometimes it's very uncomfortable mm -hmm. to be a distinct sense of self. You know, yeah. There's these self-consciousnesses. There are these little, little moments of existential suffering that are constantly happening so with headlessness does that address suffering or what is its stance on you know human suffering well I think the, the one thing is uh, just as I see it's face to no face mm. and sound to silence if you like mm. so it's suffering to no suffering mm. and so it places the suffering Mm. And uh, it, it doesn't make the suffering go away necessarily, uh, but it locates it. Mm. And uh, you've got to try it out. I mean, just as if I'm space for my hand, I'm space for the sensations in my hand, I'm mm -hmm. space for the pain in my hand, or I'm space for something that's a, a problem coming up in the space. Right. So then one looks to see whether or not this ongoing awareness of being space for what's happening makes a difference. Right. Well, it does. Right. You see, because you are, uh, there's a place right where you are that is not affected by the suffering. And mm -hmm. this isn't because you've been meditating for a long time. It's just true. It's just it's, there. It's just there. It's free and empty and silent and still and free of problems. But, or, or you could say it's free for problems, right? <laughs> but yes. that awareness that you're free of problems where you are, uh, it doesn't sound like much, but, you know, well, what's the alternative anyway? But, uh, well, I suppose there are, but uh, try it out, mm -hmm. you see. And you're living from the truth. That's the bottom line. Right. That's the way things are. The sense that I get is that it's somewhat of a, of a yoking of the personality or this arising sense of identity, you know, Ben-ness, you know, Richard-ness, is that which experiences suffering. And 
reminding Ben or Richardness of its context of this yes, space yes. Ha- has some sort of soothing effect yes. just well, by nature, go. right? You, yes, you don't have to prove that. You've experienced it. Yeah. Yes. So, that being said, when when presenting headlessness to audiences or individuals, do people get hung up on it? Like, do, is there a point where people get stuck where they don't allow themselves to experience it directly? Or they experience being headless? Yeah. Do well, I, I think everyone reacts differently, yeah. inevitably. And you either say yes, no, or maybe to it, <laughs> I think. You know, and right. no today might be yes tomorrow. And yes today might be no tomorrow. <laughs> right. You can never quite tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, so who knows uh, why someone resists this? I suppose there's lots of ways of thinking about it. And I uh, find it difficult to predict who will say, yes, that's true, and I can see that's valuable, and who will not. Mm-hmm. Um, you can often tell just after a few minutes, you know, mm-hmm. someone is just not interested. Mm-hmm. And someone else is just wide open and enjoying it. Yeah. You, know, so, uh, you see, I think that uh, the one seems to love having a, a whole range of reactions to itself. That's part of the part of life, I suppose. So, are we talking about some form of enlightenment here? You know, there's a lot of talk about enlightenment. Is that what we're talking about, or is it not even? Is that not relevant? Oh well, I I, I think that uh, in my limited understanding of the ideas around enlightenment, this is the same thing. What else could it be? Right. But, uh, you know, if someone's talking about enlightenment and it isn't this, mm-hmm. it should be. <laughs> it's so direct. Yeah. It's so direct. Yeah. I mean, you know, what, uh, what else are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And does it take any time to see this? No. You know, do you have to prepare to see this? No. You know, do you have to be in any particular state to be, you know, when you're seeing this? No. You know, I'll go by my own experience rather than what somebody tells me. It's almost like pure scientific method. What, yeah. Just observing what's happening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The sound of the plane in the silence. Yes. Cause, yeah. Because the sound of the plane has to occur in some media. Well, it, it does. It does. Yes. In silence. So part of, you, you speak on headlessness, at, and you, have, you run the website headless.org? Yeah? Yes, with friends. With friends. Yes. Headless friends? Yes. <laughs> and you I'm, also... I'm making more and more friends, headless friends. You're a new headless friend, you oh, see. thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and it's equal, you see. This is the beautiful thing about it. Mm-hmm. This is a conversation amongst equals, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You, you're, I'm not more headless than you. I right. don't know more about the actual experience than you. Right, you don't have less of a head than I do. No, no. And so this is the point, is to meet others. In, in, in the point for me, meet others who are enjoying this, if they're mm. not, share it with them, and then find out how they react to it, you know, mm. and share the different reactions to this common experience. So it's very democratic yeah. or egalitarian. Egalitarian. I really value how you place an aspect on the enjoyment place a lot of emphasis on the enjoyment aspect. Yes. It's great fun, really, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, so funny. I'm fun. Yeah. yeah I it's mean, it's to, hilarious. Do a workshop and say, okay, we're going to go straight to the experience. Yeah. yeah. Go straight to the experience. Uh, just notice you can't see your head now. <laughs> and you just wait. <laughs> yeah. See what everyone's reaction is. <laughs> okay, you know, now do this. You know, watch your hands disappear. Well, you can yeah. see people trying to kind of think, is he really, you know, asking us to take him seriously? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. But you see, the thing is, it is so obvious and immediate 
that you can do that. You can start right with it. You don't have to lead people slowly towards it and prepare them. Because it is, if it was anything else, you probably would have to do that. Mm -hmm. But because it's so immediate, it really is, and so obvious and uh, available, you can go straight for it. And it's the most familiar thing right. for people. So, I mean, then, uh, you know, in a workshop, uh, part of my job is just to keep our attention as a group on this mm -hmm. and keep guiding people in different ways back to the place they're looking out of or the place they're listening. Yeah. thinking from. It's a constant turning towards. Yes, yes. Because normally in a group where our attention is being directed uh, away from it, mm -hmm. in normal social groups, our attention is being directed to uh, ourselves as objects and others as mm -hmm. objects, you know, which is fine. But now uh, let's keep that going but also include right. subjects. Right, it's, it's funny because I hear you talk about that and then I realize that how could, you, how could you, you could be focused outwards, but how could you be anywhere but... Headless. Headless. Yeah, you couldn't, see. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, so natural and familiar mm -hmm. and everybody's birthright, as they say. Well, it's true. So is there a wrong time for headlessness like in your in your therapeutic practice would you ever would you ever think to yourself you know what maybe this practice isn't healthy for this person's conception of self right now maybe we need to work on some well, details well I only introduced headlessness if someone asked for it you know coming to this conference and doing workshops everyone's come for it right so that's up front mm -hmm. but in ordinary life I wouldn't uh, you know in a, say, a therapy session, about, I wouldn't introduce this. Mm -hmm. They haven't come for this. Right. I just be it, though. Right. You know, and I be it for me and them, because mm. when you be it for yourself, you be it for everyone, because there's only one. Right. Right? So, I mean, I'm being it for you now, right. whether you like it or not. <laughs> you can't stop me. It's very kind. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but, so, therefore, uh, the sharing of it is a kind of important but secondary thing. Important but secondary. Yes very important, I would say, but uh, you are sharing it non-verbally just by being aware of it. Mm -hmm. You're broadcasting it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, if someone then asks about it, all right, well, I'll, I'll share my experience then. Mm -hmm. but, um, you, can, you can just be it and broadcast it that way. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for taking time to talk with us. I was I was afraid that uh, interviewing a headless man would be uh, gruesome. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> is blood on the tracks. <laughs> blood on the tracks, but it was actually quite clean and sanitary. Well, we haven't finished yet. <laughs> you never quite know what's going to happen. You never quite know. But um, is there anything else you'd like to say or? or inform people who are watching this or... Well, it's your birthright and uh, you know, go to the website and uh, look at the experiments and you're welcome to join us on the free video Google Hangouts. Uh, you know, it's, if you're drawn towards meeting others who are enjoying being headless in their own way, there, there's ways and means even if you are somewhere on your own. So just extending a hand of friendship and mm -hmm. welcoming, and uh, you know, uh, our our aim, well, our main aim, my main aim is to enjoy it and be it. But alongside that is to share it. Mm -hmm. So if whatever way we can help each other share this around, like you're doing, yeah, now, yeah. Uh, uh, that's marvelous. Thank you so much for sitting yeah. with us, Richard Lang. Headless.org is where you can find more information. And this, we wouldn't have this conversation if it wasn't for the Science and Non-Duality conference that we're at. So scienceandnonduality.com. Thank you so much. Face to no face. San Jose Airport. San Jose Airport, yeah. Marvelous. Well, that's Marvelous. all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>